But thanks, Marcel. We have thoroughly enjoyed working with VECO and everyone at the VECO team over the last year. Uh, but before we get started, we'd like to dedicate this to all the guys out there that woke up at 4 a.m. for a concrete pour. This is my son, Nathan. Uh, this is actually a picture my wife took yesterday while Nathan was playing in the leaves. Um, last Monday, Nathan had surgery. He had a second cochlear implant put in. Uh, if you don't know what a cochlear implant is, that uh, enables someone who is born deaf to be able to hear. And Nathan was born deaf. Inevitably, when people hear that Nathan had his surgery last Monday, they, they immediately ask, well, how's the implant working? And my answer usually shocks them. And the answer is, we'll know about middle of next summer. And the reason is, uh, the, the process of turning on that cochlear implant uh, is a long process because you, you turn it on, but you also have to map it. And you have to understand how each little electrode in the implant uh, relates to a particular frequency that Nathan can hear. And that takes a long time to really know how it's working. And that parallels, uh, in many ways, the way that we are exploring 5D BIM. It's a process, and we have to understand how each little uh, electrode that we're dealing with is going to impact all the different frequencies that we as a firm uh, interact on So just a little bit about whore construction is we are driven by being detail oriented and progressive thinkers. We've made a commitment to to go beyond just the low hanging fruit with BIM and we're not into eye candy and Hollywood BIM is pretty difficult to do when you're in Alabama. We're also motivated by a partnering spirit. You know, Preston and I have a desire and a, a vision to become true master collaborators. And we're also driven by changing the industry. Our CEO often says that the industry is broken. And between Preston and I, we want to lead the process of fixing it. The, those three characteristics of our company go hand in hand, though. Um, to explain, one big reason the industry is broken is because there are too many adversaries and silos and not enough partners and collaborators. And in order to get beyond this, uh, we, we are actively seeking like-minded like progressive thinkers who also want to dig through the details uh, like we do. Uh, and those people are clients and designers and subcontractors consultants and vendors. So what appealed to us about the customer success plan? Well, actually, the way we looked at it was as a partnership with between us and Vico. Uh, it, it's not so much a mentor, trainee, relationship as it is um, a dialogue that enables us to talk to Vico about uh, what it is that we think we need to get out of it and allow them to take some time to develop an answer um, to that. It's, it really has been a back and forth series of dialogues for, for the entire year. And we love that partnership synergy uh, that that developed between us. So that's one thing. One of the key characteristics of our firm is a partnering spirit. And uh, therefore, it, we saw this as a partnership. Uh, another thing that attract, attracted us is the fact that both Vico and Hoare are very detail-oriented companies. Uh, if you ask a Hoare project manager what he did today, chances are he's going to tell you that he's going to tell you something about the reports that he's developing. 
uh, our DNA is details. Uh, the reports that Vika generated for the customer success plan remind us of ourselves uh, and our obsession with reporting to our clients. Uh, in fact, one of our favorite uses of BIM is, is to enrich the regular client reports that we generate. But of course, it's not, it's not reporting for the sake of reporting. It's reporting as a useful tool for clearly communicating our progress toward the goal of, of revolutionizing the process. Uh, so again, it's a focus on product, not on software. Yeah, that's right. As, as uh, Preston mentioned, you know, working with Vico, it, it truly was a, a mutual partnership. We both learned a lot um, about uh, things that we could both benefit from, and we talked. We, we often did not talk about software. We talked about process. Uh, part of the mapping that we went through was to sort of reorganize, and Marcel and his team worked with us on that. Yeah, I mean, actually, one of the three, or I guess it was a five-day training period that we had with Marcel and Dwayne from Vico down here in our office, uh, we spent a good half of that time not talking about Vico at all, but rather talking through and better understanding our process, uh, which enabled us to visualize the ways that we can use Vico to enrich that process. Uh, so the next question that we might ask about the customer success plan is how did we compose our team? How did we put it together? Uh, as, as Holly said at the introduction, we started with Aaron and I, and Aaron is a big time ideas guy, always, always exploring new ideas, and I'm a details person. I, I get into the nitty gritty and that's where I love to be, and we complement each other in that way. Uh, but we are not interested in creating a BIM department in our company. Uh, we want the only reason we want to use BIM is if it can be integrated into the workflow of every discipline. So we don't have guys who are sitting around building models full time, but we have estimators who know how a model can be valuable for estimating and we have project managers who know how a valuable a model can be valuable for uh, for control and we have superintendents who know how a model can be valuable for scheduling and they're using the models uh, another key key thing to remember and Marcel hit on this uh, when he was talking about the report that Josh Oakley wrote um, it has to come from management we we were we are amazingly blessed at Hoare to have a great commitment from the very top. Uh, our president believes that BIM is a key cog in how we're going to fix the industry. It's not the it's not the be all end all and it's not the magic fixing button, but it's certainly an important part of how we're going to fix the industry. So we're we're blessed to have a commitment from management, but. Then when, when we're really talking about how we arrived at the group of people who ended up being the, the core group for our customer success plan, uh, I'll say that what we did was we started out with our entire estimating department and we said, hey, we're going we're gonna to tackle estimating first. And because of that, let's get all the estimators in for training. Well, that didn't work terribly well when you have too many people in training you you can't really address the issues that you come across when you're training, and that leads to frustration. Uh, but intuitively, when you when you're embarking on a company-wide change, you get too many people involved. Well, we read one morning an article about how Steve Jobs ran meetings and how he was perfectly willing to bluntly kick people out of meetings if he didn't see the clear value that they brought to the objective of that meeting. And when we read that article, it, it turned the light on for us and we realized, hey, we've got to whittle this down to a key group and we, are, we arrived at four estimators plus Aaron and myself. And we were the, we became the core customer success plan group and that 
key group of four has actually become uh, our, our champions for virtual design and construction. We, we had to have the mentality when we were composing our team that we didn't want to just sprinkle BIM here and there and kind of like skipping a rock across a lake. Uh, we wanted to dive in and that attitude is, is starting to show when, when we have people visiting us from uh, the local universities, for instance, they, they're telling us that it's clear that we are uh, committed to really doing this thing and not doing Hollywood. And, and to explain the difference between what Hollywood BIM is and, and a real 5D integration, I would just say that Hollywood BIM is about showing pictures to people and hoping that they'll get excited. But with real 5D integration, I'm so excited about what I'm doing and what's, what I'm seeing on my screen that I can't help but tell everyone who walks by uh, to look at it. That's, that's the difference. Yeah, and another, to add to that, you know, we, we wanted to show owners that we're, we are taking this seriously. And you know we're we're not just sitting on the side of the pond skipping rocks. We're we're diving in. But along the way, we we did face some initial roadblocks. Uh, one important one was you know we didn't know what we didn't know, and we didn't even know that. Uh, so there's a discovery process. Um, as as Preston just mentioned, it's. It's difficult to find the right team and the right folks that are, are motivated. And it just so happened at HOAR, we we're, we're blessed with a tremendous group of guys who uh, you know, had, had a great attitude, a positive attitude throughout this whole very challenging uh, ordeal that we went through over the last year. Um, Again, sometimes we can focus too much on software, um, but it's it's more about process and uh, what is the end. Keep the end in mind. And then again, overcoming overcoming the, the inevitable inevitable frustration with learning a, a new complex process. Yeah, that frustration comes early on in the training. Uh, I know that our trainees couldn't see, myself included, we couldn't see how the very simple introductory exercises were getting us closer to the goal of using the tool on a real project. So really early, we started bucking the training process that Vico prescribed and, and demanding that we be trained on one of our real projects. Well, that insistence actually cost us a lot of time and prolonged our frustration because Vico's training process is prescriptive because they have come up with a, a systematic way to explain 5D workflow. And the way they do it is one simple concept at a time. And you can't see the big picture until you see each of the simple concepts. So what have been some of our accomplishments? Well, now we know what we know and we know what we need to know. And uh, as, the chart, as the graph that Marcel showed earlier, we've sort of, uh, you know, overcome the, the, uh, the barriers now and we're, we're starting to hit our stride with how we're deploying this and implementing this as a company. We have over 50 active BIM users as a company which has been a, a really uh, positive uh, benefit for, for Preston and I. We have a lot of help. And we're at a point now where every project includes some component of BIM. And right now, that's about 2 million square feet uh, for the current year. And we also are, we feel, and like we are have become and, and are continuing to grow and develop our uh, skills for collaboration and 
Pre Preston has been involved in developing uh, our project progression plan. I will say um, that our involvement in working with our design partners and with our clients to map out our project progression plan has really set us on the forefront. And all of this is because we've recognized how important that is because of our commitment to 5D BIM workflow. Um, and this is, it, was, it became really clear to me because in October we went up to Seattle, Tacoma, and that's, that picture was actually taken by James Gorey uh, here, here at Hoare who went on the trip with us. We went up to Mount Rainier. But uh, there was a big discussion at BIM Forum about level of development and how that impacts the different members of the design and construction team. Well, we found ourselves having already asked those questions and begun beginning to answer those questions as a result of the, the process that we had already worked through. So we were really finding ourselves, because of this, because of our experience over the last year, we're finding ourselves ahead of the conversation. And that's why we can say we're experts in collaboration. So what advice would we give to people who get what they perceive to be a sales call and uh, and someone's offering them to take a look at the customer success plan. Well, a few things. First, it's harder than you think it's going to be, but the value you're going to get out of it is much more than you can can begin to understand now. And it goes back to the fact that we didn't know what we didn't know, and we didn't know that. We knew that there was value in 5D BIM, but we didn't know how. We didn't know all of the ways that that value was going to impact us. So my advice is, don't be discouraged by the fact that it's going to be harder than you think, because it's also going to be more worth it than you think. Uh, the next thing I would say is to understand that the plan that Marcel brings to the table when he shows you and begins to explain how the customer success plan works, that that plan has real value. And at the beginning, we we recognized that, yeah, what Marcel was doing was important, but we thought that we were, well, basically we were trying to make Vico work the way we had been working for the last 25 years. Uh, and because of that, we didn't understand where we could be if we were just if we would just follow the customer success plan the way that it was described. Well, it took us over six months to recognize that, and uh, that wasn't necessarily wasted time. We we certainly learned a lot. But if I'm giving advice to to people who are looking at it from the front, I'd say understand that there's value in that plan, uh, and. Really, this goes hand in hand with that, but allow Vico to work like Vico within your workflow. Uh, we still have a, a very clear whore DNA, and what we do is no less uh, the way whore construction does things, but uh, we recognize that if we're going to get value out of Vico, we've got to let Vico work the way that Vico was built to work. Uh, and I mean, I guess I'd add to that that if your management team is in full support, you're going to be able to take this advice uh, much, much more valuably. And again, I just reiterate what a unique blessing we have from our uh, upper management being committed to this with us and and understanding with us, even though they're pushing. They're pushing hard, but they're understanding with us that this is a complex change that we're going through. So some of our uh, our three biggest wins that we'd like to share with you is we are now able to respond faster. We are able to collaborate better, and our team 
we feel like our team are the future leaders who are prepared to to change the industry. If you put all those together, I mean, really, I would say that the process of adopting this workflow has given us new ways of looking at creating buildings. Um, it's it's helped us to be more excited. Uh, I'll, I'll quote one of our estimators who said that this makes his job more fun. And people want to work with someone who's having fun. Uh, so the fact that we're able to respond faster with with more reliable, more clearly communicated information makes us better team members to work with. And because of that, the team members that we have here are going to be the, those industry changers that we want to be. With that, we appreciate everyone's time. And here's our contact information. And we will pass it back to you, Holly, for questions.